Man, get around. OG7 back here. And today, I have tales of victory and of glory that will demonstrate how to live according to beast mode law by adapting a savage mindset with a barbaric perspective on everything that you take in this altered reality that is called the Matrix, man. Hey guys, so uh, down here in LA, man, and uh, I just wanted to share with you guys, dude, that uh, you know, dealing with different types of people down here in different situations, I'm out of my comfort zone, but that's a good thing, man. It is good to step outside of your comfort zone, bro, and to expand yourself and to challenge yourself because he or she who does not challenge themselves will be challenged by life. Remember that. So the reason I came up with the topic of this video, guys, I started thinking about, like, I'm down here in L.A., it's a lot of beautiful women, a lot of beautiful people, a lot of superficial things going on, but sex sells, bro. And I wanted to tell you a story, you know, talking about sex, because um, I just want to be honest with you guys. I use a lot of, uh, I use a lot of, uh, situational game meaning that if i'm outside and it's kind of overcast like it is in la today and i see a beautiful young lady say like, man this is does the sun ever come out down here you know I'm, this is my first time down here and it's like i was expecting to see see you walk around in a bikini or something and she'll go oh you know it's just overcast today for whatever reason but it's the situation that she doesn't feel like you're hitting on her or you are approaching her you're just having human conversation and the reason I bring that up is because even though I'm very affluent at doing that, I'm very well gifted at doing that, I also use dating apps, guys, because we live in a hookup culture. And that's the way I came about this video because I'm on uh, some of these dating sites. I'm not going to tell you the names because a lot of trolls like to go and, and find me and then just mess up what I'm doing, man. So I'm just trying to be very careful now, just very cautious. But I would say I do it like this. I do 60% of my infield because I'm a very social guy. I like to meet people and network. And then I do 40% online because it's a hookup culture. And speaking of a hookup culture, I wanted to tell you guys about the hookup culture in prison bathrooms, man. And this is very interesting. And I found this out, man, when I got down to level two because at level three and four, the bathroom that you use is within your cell. So, you know, normally when you're in a cell, you gotta use the restroom. I was very fortunate I didn't have a lot of cellies just because of like my mentos and the stuff that was going on. But when I did have a cellie and I had to use the restroom, let's say at number two, I would put like up, I would put up like a little sheet, you know what I mean? For a little bit of privacy, right? Cause the bathrooms are right next to the bunk and when you're in a cell, the toilet, let's say, the toilet and the sink. It's a combination of a sink and a toilet metal and it's connected to the metal um toilet you know thing the commode but it was very interesting because i didn't like the isolation of being in level three and level four and, and level five and just being in the shoe a lot because at first it felt kind of good because i can get it you know i can just be to myself but then it got it kind of got to be lonely after the, the first three four five years right so I was really looking forward to going to level two in dorm living. I had never been to level two. And so when I got down to level two is, 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 is dorm living, but it's like pods. So the level two I was at is called Avenal Prison. And it was kind of built like Mule Creek. So you had these units, right? These buildings, these are units that have two stories. But then within the concrete unit, you have these pods and the pods just have like these bunks in there. So you got bunks for white dudes, black dudes, Mexican dudes, other dudes, right? And it's just like that. And so you got to use, you got to share, it's a shared bathroom. So when you go to the bathroom, it's just rows of commodes, bro. Like you sit down and you, 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 you defecate or have a number two and just do sit next to you pooping. You know, in prison, there was a etiquette. If, if there's like, if there's like 10 commodes and you're, let's say that you come into the bathroom, this dude on commode number 10 then you either go down to like commode number five or six or four or three. You don't sit on commode number nine. That's just kind of weird, right? So anyway, uh, when I was in prison, I worked out a lot, bro, because that was my only superpower that I had, my ability to work out and do martial arts. And so when you work out a lot, guys, it's very important to hydrate, drink a lot of water. I tell you guys that over there on my Patreon who sign up for my nutritional 
consultation. It's important to drink water every hour. Try to drink at least eight, eight ounces every hour. For those of you that thinks that's too much, then this, this is what I tell you guys. Like whenever you urinate or defecate, then drink some water. You know, whenever you eat, drink some water. So back to the story, guys. You know, I'm at level two, man. Get through reception because every time you transfer from one prison to another, you have to go through the reception area to get classified as to, you know, what is your race, what is your gang affiliation, what is your affiliation, what is your association, all that stuff. So once I get to my dorm, man, you know, I'm in there and I, like I said, I drink a lot of water because I work out every day, like from the time the yard open till it closes. And so I drank a lot of water before I went to bed and just like I did at level three and level four, I get up in the middle of the night to urinate, right? So I get up in the middle of the night and just so you know, in, in level two prisons where I was at, the, the guards control the lights. So then after final count, it's lights out. You know, some guys may have flashlights if they want to read or whatever, their letters or whatever, or look at porn or whatever, pornography magazines or whatever. I'm normally in bed because I'm exhausted, right? So I get up, man. You know, got sleeping my eyes. I got to go to the bathroom and pee. So I'm walking into the bathroom. And then I see these two shadows, man, in the, in the bathroom, man. And then they, they the, the shadows separate. So I'm like, what the fuck? And I smell this funky ass smell, man. It just smells like ass and balls, you know? So then I'm down there urinating. I'm down, I'm, at, I'm, at urin, I'm at urinal number one. And then they're down at urinal like nine and ten. And this is what I told you about the story. When you're in prison, if somebody's on the commode number 10, you don't be on number 9, bro. That's just kind of weird, man. It's just weird. And so I didn't say anything. The lights were out in there and everything. So then I went I went back to my I went back to my my bunk and I went to sleep, but then I had drank a lot of water so that I got up again in the middle of the night. So when I say the middle of the night, I think I got up the first time I got up about, you know, midnight and then the next time I got up at three in the morning. So when I walk in there at three in the morning, this time dude, I see there's like there's like two shadows, bro. Before it was one shadow that became two. Now it was two shadows. And the one was down at commode uh nine, I mean ten, and the other one was at commode six. And then they the shadows split up. But before the shadows split up I could see it from the one shadow one dude was sitting down squatting on another dude while he was sitting on the commode, bro. And then when he got up off of the dude, you know how you make that sound when you have orgasm? I'm like, oh, fuck, like that. Oh, shit. Sorry about that, YouTube. So when the dude got up, I guess he was in the middle of busting the nut. He's like, oh, fuck, man. And then, you know, you could just hear him like skeeting all over the fucking, all over the fucking floor, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? And you can smell ass and balls, man. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in here? But in prison, you mind your own business, right? So then the one dude runs past me really quick, and he's obviously like a flaming homosexual, real pretty dude, man. Looks like a woman. Run past me, pulling his pants up. And the other dude's just still on the commode. But then the other two dudes were sitting next to each other, and, uh, you know, they were just whispering to each other. So I didn't think anything of it. I was like, what the hell? So then the next day I get up, man, and I go to the yard and everything. And the one flaming homosexual that run past ran past me in the middle of the night, he says, "Hey, I, I've been I've been noticing you. You're new here." And I was like, "What about it? Because I don't talk to homosexuals. Nothing against them, but you can get killed, man. Because dudes be in love with them homosexuals." And he says, "Hey, if you ever want to participate in what we were doing in there, you just come in the bathroom in the middle of the night because the guards are sleeping, and that's when we really get to hook up with the guys that we like, you know. And this is open season. We just kind of share the love." And I was like. No, I'm good. And he goes, everybody says that when they first get here. I can tell you've been down a long time, and we can really help to relieve you. And I was like, whatever, dude. So I didn't think anything of it. But, dude, every night when I had to get up, because, hey, let me tell you something. I'm not going to stop my program just because there's some homosexual activity. If I need to drink water because your body, your muscles are 80% water, I'm not going to let some little flaming dude stop me from getting swole. So I get up all night. Sure enough, all the time there was dudes in there getting busy. Now, some guys, it's not the same guys every night. Some guys, I went in there, and one dude sitting on a commode, another dude's kneeling in front of him, sucking him off. And I walked in, man, they can see that it's not a correctional officer because this is what I want to share with you guys before this video gets too long. The correctional officers know what is going on, bro, because when they do the final count, bro, 
and they turn the lights off, they go up in the control booth and they go to sleep, bro. They don't really care about what's going on. They just get a lot of correctional officers are either in school or they got another job and they just doing that night job. They just sleep while they're at work. So they don't really care what's going on. That's why there's a lot of shenanigans going on in prison. So I just wanted to share with you guys. I know I'm always talking about butt raping, but at level one, level two is all a hookup culture, man. So here, this is what I want to leave you with. If you guys don't listen to me and stay out of prison, you end up going to prison. Whatever you do, don't go to the bathroom late night in prison or level one, level two, because they might think you want to participate in the hookup culture, and that might not be what you want to do.